Good morning, everyone. And welcome to all those who are joining us by the live stream this morning. Thank you for being with us. This event of Jesus encountering the demoniac and the swine who are then destroyed by the exodus of these demons from the person who was possessed with them is told twice during the uh, ecclesiastical year. And because it's such a powerful event and such a, a visible yet spiritual event that has been really told for centuries because it was so decisive. And it's an important thing because I think for all of us to hear it um, again and again, all of these different kinds of events that are these testimonies, witnesses to spiritual encounters, especially because we are, we're so tied to the physical world that it's, sometimes it's hard for us to actually sort of incorporate into our mind and our thinking that sometimes these spiritual and um, events actually do take place. And so it's something that is an important testimony. Just like the saints of our time, Saint Paisios, who has a powerful testimony about his own encounter with the living God, with other saints, and even with demons, which are a re reminder to the reality of this spiritual world that exists around us. So I want to take some time to talk about Saint Paisios, the Athenite today, since we celebrate his memory on this day. And I want to talk about him in terms of some of these, again, powerful witnesses in his life that provide for us um, a living witness, even in, in this time as well. Saint Paisios was born in the month of July 1924 in Asia Minor, and he was baptized with the name Arsenios, which is, there's an interesting story about that because it was a name given to him by the priest who baptized him was also named Arsenios, and this was not to be his name, but the priest Arsenios, who later became Saint Arsenios, predicted this Saint Paisios' calling to the spiritual life even from his baptism. And then as a youth, he was a very faithful child. He spent time, a lot of time, walking in the woods and praying, holding a wooden cross that he himself had made. And this is something that he continued in his practice of prayer, to be walking in the woods. And he did that many, many hours in his life, in his monastic life on Mount Athos. His official life on Mount Athos began in 1950 living in various monastic communities under the obedience of a few different elders. He sought the advice and wisdom of the Athen Athenite elders while working hard both physically and spiritually. And he would always be willing to help others complete their tasks if his work was done. He would never just sit, but he would take on the tasks of others because he was always showing this, his, his own lo humble love and concern for others. In 1979, he moved to his, fi his final monastic residence at the Hermitage of the Nativity of the Theotokos near the capital of Mount Athos, which is called Caries. And here, thousands, literally thousands and thousands of pilgrims from all over the world flocked to visit to learn, to seek advice and a blessing from this holy elder. And it's here that I was blessed to encounter this saint as well in 1988. St. Paisios, by his prayers, worked miracles in his life. He had the gift of insight into the lives and the hearts of those that he met. He spoke to one of my uh, schoolmates about his cardiac condition and there was no way that he knew about this cardiac condition that this, uh, this uh, seminarian had at the time. St. Paisios encountered the divine light of God in pure prayer of the heart. He encountered the living Lord and so much more, all accomplished by a humble monk who wore a torn cassock. And that's actually what he was doing when I met him. He was talking to us, a group of seminarians, and mending another cassock that, that was just worn out because he was a person who had almost no possessions. 
and about possessions, he said, those who would like to live a genuine spiritual life must first of all be satisfied with a few things. When their life is simplified without too many concerns or nuisances, not only will they be liberated from the worldly spirit, they will also have plenty of time available for spiritual things. And so it's interesting that in his monastic life, and in all of the whole monastic life, even though he sort of occupied and was the, the leader of this um, hermitage of the nativity of the Theotokos, it was only a borrowed place. It didn't belong to him. It had belonged to hundreds of other monastics who had occupied that space. And they all shared that space and sanctified it by their prayerful lives. There are many miraculous occurrences that happen in his life, really literally breaks or revelations between the spiritual and physical worlds. There were accounts of the appearance of St. Paisios to many different people and places while he never left Mount Athos. There was a rescue of a child on the street of Athens, um, just sort of getting him out of the, the path of an oncoming vehicle at the very last second, and people witnessed seeing this monk, and then later were able to identify him as the elder Paisios. And when he was questioned about that event, being seen in Athens and saving this child, he said, I don't know anything about that, but I do know that at this particular time is when I pray for travelers. He also had an amazing encounter with St. Ephemia, who we remembered yesterday. So it's interesting that there are two, two of the saints uh, and their feast days are so close together that he was praying for guidance from St. Ephemia as she guided those at the Fourth Ecumenical Council to find the true faith. He was praying to her, and as he was praying during the, uh, the third hour, there was a knock at his door, and he said, who is it? And he hears this woman's voice, which is extraordinary on Mount Athos because there are no women, and she says, it is me, Ephemia. And he sort of ignores that and continues with his prayer, and there was a knock again. Who is it? It's me, Ephemia. And then he realizes that this uh, presence has entered into the, into his, um, into the monastic uh, hermitage. And he goes and he sees her venerating an icon in the hallway and he asks her to say, give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He was testing that this was indeed a saint and not a demon. And so she says that and they begin a conversation and she offers him um, she offers him advice on what he had been asking about, and then he speaks to her about her martyrdom and how she withstood the, 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 the very difficult things that she went through in martyrdom. And she said, when he asked her how she did it, he said, she said, if I would have known the glories that I would have experienced in heaven, I would have gladly experienced more torments in order to receive the great blessings of the kingdom of heaven. And so what do we do with this information, with all of these literally books that are filled with these events, these marvelous spiritual events that happened in the life of, of uh, Elder Paisios in such, just in our own times to think about that. We have to do more than just marvel at his spiritual gifts, but we can be affirmed and strengthened in faith with the confidence of the existence of this spiritual world that is so that we so easily lose sight of, that we can be reminded of God's transfiguring power to sanctify our own lives. And that this, and we can also be reminded of the importance of this, of the testimonies of the saints and those who encounter them and how those also serve to help remind us and connect us to God's presence in our lives. And then we can also practice the advice that these saints have given to us for, from their lives to our own lives. And so I close with one piece of practical advice that was given by St. Paisios, and he says, every day you should try to plant in your soul something spiritual 
which will eject something worldly and sinful. Gradually, the old self will be disclaimed, and you will be able to move freely in the spiritual realm. Replace sinful images in your mind with holy ones. Replace songs with hymns, worldly magazines with spiritual books. Simple yet powerful advice to allow God to fill and move us with his presence every day. From someone who has lived this kind of life in our own times and has left us a shining example of what is possible with faith, perseverance, and love. So may we honor St. Paisios with our own spiritual struggle following his advice so that we may also glorify God in the saints in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.